In this video, we'll learn how to evaluate certain integrals over intervals that are not bounded or integrals of a function that is unbounded at an endpoint. Here's a graph of the function 1 over x squared. We know how to find the area under the curve and above the x-axis between x equals 1 and x equals 4. We could also find the area under this curve and above the x-axis between x equals 1 and, say, x equals 16. But could we find the area under this curve between 1 and infinity if we let the upper endpoint of integration increase without bound? In other words, would it make sense to find the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative 2 dx? We've only defined definite integrals when both of these endpoints of integration are finite. So let's replace the upper infinite endpoint with a massive number m, and then take the limit as this massive number heads to infinity. This integral is a proper integral. We have a function that's bounded on the interval from 1 to m, and the interval from 1 to m is a finite interval. But if we evaluate this definite integral as we did before, we can now take the limit as m goes to infinity, and we get an answer of 1. It may seem strange that the area of a region of infinite length is actually finite. What if we had a different function? What if instead of 1 over x squared, we looked at the function 1 over x? This area appears somewhat bigger than before. Let's see if it is finite. We must first rewrite this improper integral as a proper integral. We'll again use m as some massive number. The natural log of 1 is 0. So we need to take the limit as m goes to infinity of the natural log of m. You may recall that the natural log function is increasing and that although it increases very slowly, it does eventually approach infinity. You can show this by noting that the natural log of 2 to a very large power L is this large number times ln of 2. And as we make L very large, we get a very large number times a fixed value ln2. So this must head towards infinity as L goes to infinity. So our limit down here is also infinite. This tells us that the area under the 1 over x curve from 1 to infinity is not finite. We might say that this improper integral diverges, in this case, to infinity, while our previous improper integral converged to 1. If we now look at a graph of the function cosine x, and we were to integrate this from 0 to infinity, Notice that we would add area, then subtract area, then add area, then subtract area, and so on. So if we try to evaluate this improper integral of cosine of x from 0 to infinity, we again replace the upper endpoint of integration with a massive number m. Here, sine of 0 is 0. And if we examine sine of m as m tends to infinity, this approaches no limit at all. The sine function keeps oscillating between negative 1 and 1. So this limit does not exist. Again, we say that this improper integral diverges. Now let's look at the function 1 over square root of x. And let's consider the area under this curve between 0 and 1. Because the function 1 over square root of x is unbounded at 0, we can only evaluate an integral over an interval from a number very close to 0 to 1. So this integral of 1 over square root of x from 0 to 1 is also improper because our integrand is unbounded at one of the endpoints. We can replace that problematic endpoint with a number a that is slightly bigger than 0 and take the limit as a approaches 0 from positive values. As we now let a approach 0, we get an answer of 2 this improper interval converges to 2. So the area under this curve, as we let the left endpoint get closer and closer to 0, that area approaches 2. In general, for improper integrals, we replace a problematic endpoint with a very large number or a number close to our problematic endpoint, 
and then we take a limit after we've evaluated the corresponding definite integral.